<laughs> so there's a cap. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, Carrie. Oh. Hi, Carrie. Hi. <laughs> there she is. There. Yes, I am here. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you, Tim. How's your daughter? Um, she's much better, thanks. Um, yeah, she was pretty sick for a while and um, and uh, was able to you know stay at home alone in her apartment for ten days and um, cough it out and you know just yeah. kind of get past it. But now she's much better she's back in the lab and and you know back to normal pretty much good okay yeah yeah it's scary for a parent you know to be far away and not be able to be there to help her yeah oh. well thanks for asking um let's call the meeting to order here looks like we have a quorum and um <laughs> And the first, uh, the first item of business here today is to welcome uh, Nat Dickey as the new Ward 3 member of the Art and Culture Commission. Hey, yeah. um, so we're happy to have you with us, Nat, and uh, look forward to your contributions to, to the commission. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Really delighted to be here. And anytime you have questions about anything, feel free to ask uh, any of us, Kim is, is uh, very knowledgeable about history and um, the, the the procedures that have gone into um, this commission from the beginning, um, and and kind of the growing pains that were I think still still going through, um, but certainly we're we are headed in the right direction I think by um, you know, starting to do a few things even now during this pandemic time, and we look forward to uh, some conversation later. Uh, about some ideas for for upcoming projects. Um, so, taking a look at the amend at the agenda, does anybody have any uh, any amendments that they'd like to make to the agenda for today? All right. Well, in that case, we will move on to uh, the minutes from September twenty first, which uh, should be it should are in your packets here. And hopefully you've had a chance to to take a look at uh, those and um, I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the minutes from September. A motion to approve. Is there a second? Sorry, who seconded it? Sell the roll. Okay. Kim, would you run the roll call, please? Wolensey? Yes. Dickey? Yes. Winterstein? Yes. Williams? Yes. Selgebold? Yes. All right, the minutes are approved from September. And uh, looking around here, I, I don't see anyone in the audience. Um, aha. Hi, Sorry about that. Nice to see you. You all. Uh, we were just taking a look here to see if there are any citizens to be heard, and um, it doesn't appear that there are at the moment. So, uh, so let's move right on to the next part: reports and information. Um, and here we have um, some information for project priorities, and uh, um, perhaps uh, at, at this time I'll let. Uh, let Kim um, lead us through this uh, and and kind of tell us a little bit about what you've put together here and um, and suggestions for uh, for a conversation uh, that you've listed at the at the bottom of page three. Kim, thank you, Chair. So as you know, about a year ago, we started talking about what projects that um, the Art and Culture Commission should do 
with our 2019 money. And that's when uh, we started um, talking about different ideas and art benches came up as our priority project. And uh, just this past weekend, we celebrated uh, the installation uh, in downtown. So as we continue looking forward, our balance of our 2020 budget is going towards the water tower project. And so we really are starting to plan for our 2021 budget, which is $4,000, uh, which is um, planned for the, uh, for the season. And then we also have balances left over from previous projects. And so uh, I think it was in 2015, there was a substantial road project that included some sidewalk upgrades. And so we did the sidewalk art and poetry project. So we have some, a balance of funds for that project. And again, when people donated for that project, they donated for sidewalk amenities. And so we've been trying to kind of keep that money for a similar project. Um, and then we also have, uh, the balance, which is about $10,000 of the um, public art that was donated to the FM Area Foundation, to the Moorhead Community Fund for art that would make people proud. Um, and we had initially issued a call for art and we had varying responses, but we had only suggested two for implementation due to just the, the progress of, of the proposals, not necessarily knowing all of the the details yet some of the projects didn't have a final location or didn't have some of the other details that we were really looking forward to implementing immediately. So we've got uh, $4,000 for 2021 budget or else we could look at um, some of the other projects. Um, and on your, on your communication, um, it, it's just kind of an open-ended, where should we go from here kind of conversation. Kim, what happened? I'm, I'm trying to remember a year or two ago, the um, project proposal that was favorable, but I don't remember what happened. The African-American soldier um, relief of some kind, uh, what, what happened to that project? So I, I believe that Felix Battles was that soldier's name. And I think that we just didn't have a final location so maybe I could um, reach out to that artist again and see if there have been any developments in in a confirmed location. And, and I think some of the project development was also um, in question because I think there was already private funding for the actual work of art. So that proposal was more for um, an interpretive sign to just give a little bit of history um, as well, but I think the main question for that project was its location and it didn't have a, a proposed finalized location. I, I propose, I mean, I, I love the idea we need to talk about how to spend this funds, but um, that's a that's a that's something that we already have the funds kind of in place. It sounds like the projects in place, the ideas in place. If we can get that rolling here sometime soon um, to get that placed, <laughs> it's done. Um, I was going to ask too, if, if we're thinking about things that need to happen, uh, something that really struck me when we first formed our commission, we were first discussing uh, the creation of that new plaza area opposite the Dairy Queen, that building that was just going up, right? That just went, it was going up at that time. You know what I'm talking about? Um, and we were hoping that there'd be some sort of maybe public art in that area. And obviously, nothing's obviously happened. It's still pretty barren and kind of empty. I sure would love to see something go up right there. I don't know. It just seems like such a prime real estate location for some public art. Yeah. Um, Kenyon, I believe all the art is inside the building. They have they have um, art on the walls, and I believe they curate to some degree um, a, a shift in what's showing there periodically. But I don't have a lot of detail on that. That's something that I think perhaps the arts partnership was helping to facilitate in terms of um, the call for art and having um, the shows rotate. But I don't know specifically. Um, I just know that there is art, um, there's visual art on the walls inside the hallways. So it doesn't feel particularly public, although I think it is strictly not private. So. 
it should be great to if I don't I mean it should be great to have an iconic piece of art you know cherry spoon bridge type of thing right there opposite the Dairy Queen because it's already an iconic location for Moorhead and mm -hmm. you know if we could really get something truly creative there that um helps us a little I whatever I think something could go there whatever goes there if it's good enough and iconic enough it could be an image like the Yomkomst uh building is for Moorhead because it's just such a centralized psychic center of the city right mm -hmm. there but I love I, I I just don't I was really hoping to see something happen there I don't know what we do to move that forward but it seems like it could be really in a great space for a large outdoor piece so you're you're talking about that building across the street to the south of the of the Dairy Queen right yeah well, I mean, I've never been in there, so I don't, I don't know that that there is public art in there. I was not aware of that, but I guess I think you know, if it's indoors, it's not really public. I mean, <laughs> uh, even though I mean, anybody can walk in there probably, but um, it's not the same as driving by it or walking by it or biking by it or or having it be something that's a recognizable thing in the in the city. So you know, I guess I would be. I would also be kind of on the side that that uh, Kenyon was sort of leading here uh, with some kind of a, of a public of a public art piece that is outdoors, accessible to all, um, and perhaps even a, a rotating, I mean, a rotating gallery there or something that you know that that could be changed out occasionally or moved or. You know, a collaborative thing with you know. I know the 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 Rourke has a has a sculpture garden outdoors, and um, you know, I don't know what their what their you know what their uh, mission is for for changing that or adding to that. But perhaps there might be an opportunity for a collaborative um, project with somebody in in the community. So I believe the plaza area that's elevated um, at that block E is private property. Um, so therefore it would need to have some sort of partnership or collaboration with that property owner to put some sort of outdoor sculpture. Um, so that one would probably need quite a bit of collaboration for, for anything to happen. Um, if, you know, I've been forwarded Quite a few times and lots of different others other cities have different sculpture walks uh, mankato sioux falls um, i'm not sure if that's something you're meaning or if you're thinking more of a a single location i was thinking more of just that one location just because it is so prime and I'm, i can't help but think especially if you have one solid piece that's a really quality piece that can be there um, I can't help like Chicago's the the bean the the silver cloud type of thing. When you have something like that, that's really a prime piece of art. People come, they get selfies, they stay around. It it attracts business. It can only be good for the owner, of course, assuming the owners. Um, but as an owner, if I if I could have some say into what's going to go here, or even honestly, I hate to say it, but if it's their private property, final say. But if we could maybe potentially organize a, um, I, just, I would say hate to say, I should say they should have final say, but maybe we could uh put together some sort of we have this much budget we have this much out um in place let's get a large scale bronze a large scale steel something that um could be a truly iconic uh piece right there in central moorhead and and the owner of course basically we're we're going to forward you a list of here's some here's four three or four finalists you pick and we're going to ask you make it a permanent installation from this three or four finalists or something. I don't know, I'm just spitballing random ideas. But I, I was really hoping, the reason I'm throwing them out though is because I really thought by now something would already be in there. I thought the owner would have put a park or benches or something, and right now it's just bare concrete. And um, it needs something beyond, and it can be something really neat, I think. So I digress. Well, I have uh, I have forwarded on as some Council members of some staff, uh, what uh, a sculpture wall at uh, Ames, Iowa does. And they, uh, I think they bring in eight, but I, any magic number you want. They, they, uh, they pay an honorarium to the uh, artist. They get $500 for displaying their, their pieces. 
And then <clears throat> businesses or neighborhoods can buy those pieces if they want them. And then the, I, I, don't, I don't know the details. I'm sure the city somehow facilitates the move, getting them to where they want to be permanently. And that might be, you know, at the quadrant of, uh, you know, of the Dairy Queen and in that other building and so on, or other places. And uh, I, I think a great place for the sculpture walk is right along the, that Blue Goose bike trail. You know, it's not, it's not downtown, but there's so many people now using that new bike path. And we have a space kind of between the, the road and the bike path that people could walk, they could stop, and, and, and then eventually the, the pieces are either moved or bought and sold, put someplace. And eventually you could have, we could have miles of sculptures along the way. And just to throw out another idea is because they also talked about a weekly outdoor concert series. And when Kenyon, when you had that group down there performing, it was like magic. People just kind of started showing up when all of a sudden they heard music, you know, and the downtown has two places. Uh, in Woodlawn Park, the Plains Art Museum and the city or something, they have this little amphitheater built right there. And the other place is just uh, northeast of the River Haven, a uh, new place on the bank there. I remember seeing a concert there years, years ago. And um, I just, I know that the city at one time had a semi that, uh, not a semi trailer that opened up and you could have, it could be a stage. And I just thought if, if somehow we could, uh, we could have weekly series of downtown. People would show up and then they say, well, as long as we're downtown, let's get a Dairy Queen, let's get a beverage, we're helping the businesses down there. So those are two ideas, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else have any, have any brainstorms or ideas of things that, you know, that might, we might wanna, move forward with here or do a little bit more research on? Um, I guess I wanted to ask a little bit about um, timing and uh, what this, what the role of our group will be in terms of the underpass. Um, I'm just not sure um, if, if it'll be a situation where we get to offer input, but there won't be funding. So we should be reserving some of our funding <laughs> or maybe we're going to help raise funding um, because I like the um, like the water tower. I would hate for us to get to a point where we've done some design work and some community engagement and then there isn't funding there. So um, I want to make sure that we that we know what we're looking at as we head into it. Um, and frankly, if if we are going to have to help come up with funding to, in order to actually make uh, the downtown underpass something more than just functional, um, that would be my priority in terms of any funding that we might have in a budget that we would want to, we I would want to put it toward that. To me, that seems like the kind of project that's going to need, um, it's going to need a lot of coordination and it's going to, I don't know. I think it's going to need funding. <laughs> um, that project is just so new right now. So it was included in the bonding bill that was recently approved at the legislature last Thursday or Friday. <laughs> so I haven't quite, it's so exciting, but I just <laughs> don't know how it's all going to translate. So it is on our radar to start talking about what the different aesthetic design elements are. So there's a group of um, folks that have been identified to help a ha start a conversation with MnDOT, since it will be MnDOT um, will be a partner on the underpass. Um, and so we'll be looking at, you know, what, what will the sidewalks or pavement look like? What will the walls look like as it gets developed? And so I believe part of the, 
project overall funding includes a little bit of it, but I don't know where things start and stop depending on the scope of what might get identified. So I, I'll need to learn more before I can speak to that. That'll be 11th Street, right? Yeah, it to me, it just seems like that's a, um, I know it's a ways away, but it's a brilliant opportunity, particularly if we're still, um, if we still have available funds for the Moorhead Proud, um, for example, that that seems like there may well be opportunity for something um, for that that theme to be a part of that project. Um, and I think sidewalk art and poetry could probably fit as well. So I exactly. think I think yeah. we've got some parts and pieces, but I don't know how the timing works of once we get funding, how long it'll take to get the design drawings developed, how long it takes to implement by the time it takes to actually build it. Um, all of those are not really clear to me at this time. I'd love to see our input on that become more than just, um, uh, you know, sidewalks. I mean, because especially you have an underpass like that, there's room for mosaics on the walls. There's room for um, uh, neon art installation underneath the, the overpass. I mean, there's some really fabulous opportunities you could do that would make it a, a site rather than just a functional <laughs> something you know now and if it involved if it involved electricity like neon or something there would obviously be a, a wiring needs that need to go into the planning stages but they'd be minimal compared to and mosaics could be added after the fact uh but they nevertheless i'm sure that people putting it together would want to know hey you don't have to finish this wall leave it in a rough state the artist is gonna do what happens next you know um but planning is definitely in order for that to happen yeah is there any chance that there would be state funding for something like that, like legacy amendment? I'm not sure, um, but I think the possibility is there. Like I said, there's it's just so new of what the the overall project funding will be, and then we're we're already in partnership with MinDOT for this design portion, and so I'm not sure how their funding or how it all all the parts and pieces will come together yet i'm not sure and i was just wondering if if that's some something we could help with in terms of advocacy or does that have to go through city council or or the bid process or something like that sure so we have received um legacy funding through lake region arts council um, but for us to submit an application, we do need council approval to submit and accept the funds. And so there is a little bit of process to make sure everyone's on board, um, but we have done it in the past. Cool, thanks. What about the, is there anything that um, is in the works for the new, I'm assuming you're talking about the underpass that's gonna be on 11th street, right? Yeah. So what about the one that's that's currently in construction over on uh, 20th and 21st Street? I, I'm not sure exactly what that'll be. Um, from, from a distance, it looks like there are some aesthetic kind of patterning of the concrete, but I haven't really been over there and I haven't seen the construction details to, to really fully understand um what that could be so we could look in that's something you want to explore yeah i i mean i i think that that would be again another opportunity to um to have a statement piece of some sort that's that's right out there i mean that's going to be it's it's a highly traveled um you know uh, conduit in and out of out of Moorhead, um, and uh, you know, and I think it's going to be even more so, you know, knowing that it it, it avoids the train crossing completely. So, um, but if there's you know if there's some way, and then I, I don't know. I mean, obviously the project is 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 in progress, um, so it would almost have to be some kind of, some kind of an external um addition to to either the landscaping or to the 
you know, the something that that may be added on, like uh, like um, Kenyon was saying, a mosaic or or you know, an add-on piece that could be in, installed onto the to the to the concrete or to the you know construction in some way. So, yeah, I think that's worth you know d doing a little checking in, and um, and it may be something that uh, you know that if there isn't funding already already designated or or any kind of contingency for that kind of um, addition to the project, perhaps uh, that that would be a time then to to consider seeking some grant funding. I have kind of a silly suggestion, which is Moorhead doesn't really have a giant animal, right? We don't have a prairie chicken or a blue ox or whatever. So what if we had a Mr. Potato Head that was like, you know, the size of a building and people could come and take their, their selfies there? I can see that. <laughs> Mr. Spud. Right. Mr. Spud. See, it's right outside the high school, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right by the hockey arena. <laughs> or on top of it. Or on top of it. Yeah. We probably yeah. Hasbro, we got a sponsor already, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Hasbro could kick in a half million for that. I'm pretty sure they could. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's not a crazy idea. I mean, it is a kind of a crazy idea, but, you know, it's, that's, I mean, I don't think it hurts to think outside the box a little bit, you know? Um, I mean, the, if nothing else, we, we, we artists have, have a sense of humor too, right? I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, that's part of, that's part of being creative. Anybody else have anything that um, that's on your mind with this, with respect to this uh, topic? The yeah, I, what Kim has sent out, I, I'm kind of rereading it, and it you know it's always talks about place making, creating pl uh, places where people want to gather, and I, I you know I like great sculptures and it's underpass in both places but those aren't places we're going to gather those are places we're going to drive through and and look at something and so uh if if we're going to follow kind of the strategic roadmap i i i want to i'm going to say you know it talks about place making people gathering and that's why I like i i really like the idea of having concerts um uh, a couple of years ago, I, I I went downtown Fargo to to I guess the LZ, the Shriners were having a a parade, and I ended up down by Great Northern Bikes, and in their green space they had a they had this open mic, and I was just amazed by the talent of the of the young artists that got up there and, and sang, and they were high school students and young college students i thought holy mackerel i mean if we could give them a a venue you know uh or bands like just once a week someplace to gather i thought it would be just fantastic so i i'm, I'm kind of i'm looking back at this roadmap and saying a place uh place making place that's what i'm thinking about Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, I think it's, you know, bringing it, bringing it back to, you know, to the work that's already been done, the thinking that's already been done on the, on, on the, the future of these kinds of projects. But um, yeah, the idea of a, of a, of a multi arts um, um, performing space, as well as um, some art, uh, permanent installations, or even temporary installations of art. Uh, in a place where there could be gathering and more than just a performance going on, for example. And, you know, if you had a place, I mean, we have that beautiful blue stem amphitheater, but that's not accessible. You know, it's it's not accessible to people unless you have some way to get there. Uh, but, I, and, and, but I think, you know, something that's in the downtown center area of town 
um, that's accessible by by foot and bike from from lots of different places and from lots of people in a in a in a concentrated part of town. Um, there could be you know a great deal of exposure for for public art. So I know I'm new, so I, this may have been discussed before, but. Um, are there plans for Moorhead Center Mall and or the parking garage that could open up some space or repurpose some space? Um, I believe they're exploring some of that with a developer and it's also part of our downtown master plan, uh, which is still in draft form. I'm not exactly sure when that will be um, uh, the final drafts to be out for review soon, but I'm not sure exactly what the timeline is. I'm just, I was just thinking that for me, there isn't an obvious location, like you were saying, Tim, that's accessible downtown for things to happen, but I, I can imagine something developing if there were, if some changes were planned. You know, um, and I don't know if maybe that's, you know, that's Larry and Kim's role as people who have access to that master plan and, and I'll be involved in that decision making, but it'd be great if, if, you know, what we're talking about could be considered as that those designs are being finalized. I can look into what that timeline is and I can invite Derek LaPointe um, maybe to our uh, uh, an upcoming meeting, depending on when the, that timing is, to see um, how we could partner or what future role that could be. Yeah, that's that's great, and you know, I think that these kinds of conversations um, and and small steps at um, getting art arts in, more in the public in the public uh, you know vision um is great and i don't you know we don't necessarily need to rush to spend um to spend the money and um if there's things that we would anticipate coming down the road and we're having these conversations and uh, building relationships with people that that are making these kinds of decisions uh, that's that's a really positive thing in my opinion This may be another uh, sort of out of left field idea, but um, is it worthy to think about virtual spaces, given all that we've learned in recent months about the, the importance of virtual spaces? Um, you know, we, we obviously can't gather in the ways we're used to right now, and we don't know what the future of that looks like. But, um, you know, is that something that would even fit our mandate? Do you have any examples of something you've seen before where that's been applied? Well, I mean, my area is music. So I think about um, what the symphony did recently, what Concordia is doing now, where we're, we're preparing performances to be experienced virtually because people can't go to concerts. Um, and just thinking about, let's say, you know, the high school or, or other elements of the city where people might want to engage with the performing arts. We can certainly broaden it to include theater, dance, what have you, um, or visual art for that matter, um, in ways that one can't when one is quarantined or when one feels you know, uncomfortable congregating in large groups or things like that. And I don't know if it would be something on the, the city website or if it would be something to do coordinate through Facebook or, um, but just, just to give people artistic experiences that they currently can't experience in person. Well, well if you, you have public access on all cables, you know, there has to be, if you have that, but if you don't have cable, you know, you have to go to YouTube or, or someplace else, but that's a good point, you know. We hope this thing's gonna be done soon, but we don't know. <laughs> Well, and it could even be something like 
uh, commissioning a work that could initially be experienced virtually, but eventually experienced in person or something like that. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there, whether it's a, a piece of theater art or a piece of music, a choir composition, you know, something that would be, you know, that would have elements of Moorhead Proud perhaps um, because of the text that was chosen or the, the concept, um, but would live on after its initial performance. I think that that opens up a whole new, um, you know, conversation about how how once we emerge from from this pandemic, or once you know it is more contained or whatever that you know when when we get back to some kind of normal, is is, is there really, you know, is it ha have have the 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 way that the public consumes arts um, changed in a significant way that may not may not go back to the way it was exactly before. Um, you know, is there we 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 have become much more virtual, and and more people have been forced to become virtual um, in the last six eight months uh, than than normally than that than that normal rate of growth. Uh, would would seem to have indicated, but um, now it's uh, it, it's just such a common part of our lives. And but really, there's a vacuum of opportunities um, compared to what there was before in the in the pre times. Um, and so, you know, is is that a conversation that needs to be had amongst amongst art makers and 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 amongst uh, um, you know people who are who are knowledgeable about you know their particular genre and how how it may change permanently or or how there may be some lasting impact from um from the virtual time <laughs> so uh, i mean i do I, I do like that that train of thought and, and you know to, to to that's that is certainly something that we should not discard as far as uh, uh, a topic of conversation Anybody else have any thoughts you just want to blurt out or share? <laughs> uh, I, I do know that in the near future, we have that this Fargo Moorhead sesquicentennial coming up. And, uh, you know, I, if somehow there can be a lasting piece of uh, art or something that kind of commemorates it. Uh, we'd have a well. Anyway, I we I think that the council could uh, approve money because it's a couple couple of years away, and so there might be if we got we might be able to spend a little bit more on a on something that might be permanent. That would be down that that would be down the pipeline. Is that in 2025, Larry? I think it's four, 24, I think. We get, we get big, two big hands reaching across the river and shaking. We can make a bridge out of that. <laughs> Well, Kim, have you um, have you uh, taken taken all this information down? These uh, thoughts that are coming out and um, topics that we're raising. Yes, and I will do a little investigating with 
uh, our planning team to see if we can um, narrow some of the scope. I'm hoping we'll be learning more soon now that uh, the funding has been um, in that bonding bill. We'll probably be learning more in the days to come on that. Um, and so a month always comes quicker than I think when I'm working on developing the packet, but hopefully we'll have something to to share with an update on on some of the different projects, whether it be uh, the 2021st underpass, the downtown underpass, um, what were a few of the other things, but I think there's enough, um, maybe even the downtown plans progress to, um, to work on um, baby steps of, of getting towards some pro projects. All right. That's exciting. Um, anybody else have anything else uh, when it when it uh, if, from on this topic of um, of priorities or uh, ideas? If, yeah, I'm going to interject it. Um, like the underpass and so on. That fun, that's like the 11th Street one. I think they talked about 2023 even beginning on that, and so you know they're they may be able to build into that budget some some design work and so on but uh we, when i look at this uh, the thing it says we've got we got four thousand dollars next year so i think one of the things is what 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 can we do with four thousand to you know to do something right away and then maybe plan down the road to see if we can get you know the council will get approve more money in 22, 23, 24, but is there something that we can do make an impact with the 4,000 we're given next year? So. I was just gonna ask if um, there's any sort of list or record or map of projects that have been done, you know, I don't know, over the last five years or decade or something like that, just for my information or and others may be interested too. Um, I know this commission is relatively new, right? Um, but, you know, I, I don't have much of a sense other than my own sort of wanderings of what what public art in Moorhead is and would love to, maybe it's already on the website and I just need to look, um, but. Yep, so it is on the website. Um, some of it is a little piecemeal depending on who led the charge on the project. Um, but there is our arts and cultural map that's available um, at cityofmoorhead.com backslash art uh, mm -hmm. that we worked on in partnership with Concordia. So that has um, the public art and it also has um, some history too. So that one's a little dynamic and we haven't quite built a or found another student to help continue to add more information, but we're always hopeful uh, that that opportunity will come again. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can help make that connection as well. Was that Lisa Schoberg? Do you know, Kim? Yeah. yeah. So Lisa's role has changed. She's now our registrar. So, you know, I yeah, think her capacity for that the... may, may be different now, but there may be someone else doing archive work that, that could. And, and we've been in connection with some of the team that was with that and some of the team that's taken over um, some of those roles, but it just um, part, the students that we worked with initially were independent studies, students who had kind of a niche interest or a role in um, that partnership with ARC, GIS mapping mm -hmm. and um, helping catalog the different pieces. And so I, I'm not sure how niche it is compared to what student interests are at this time, but sure. that'd be wonderful. Yeah, great. Well, that's great, and Larry, uh, I appreciate that that suggestion. I mean, we do have we do have funds that that we can spend and that we should spend now in the coming year. So, I think as we move forward in the next uh, couple of months here, that um, you know, before well, I guess in in the spring, you know, that that would be a would be a good time to start 
to or to to see something come to fruition, whether it's um, finishing up on projects that we've already started or um, launch a new a new project that could debut in the spring or summer of next year. That um, you know, at that point, hopefully, we'll be um, you know back to mingling and going places together and um you know communicating in that in that way again um so we won't forget that we have money to spend um, <laughs> that's um that's uh that's a good thing so it's we're going to be constantly reminded that no one's going to forget that that um there's projects that we can do now Okay, thanks for, uh, for, for a lively discussion there, everyone. I appreciate uh, your insights and, and thoughts, ideas. Uh, that's great. Let's uh, move on to the next item on the agenda, the uh, member reports and updates. And uh, we'll start with the project updates. And again, this is, uh, if you look through the packet here after the um, documents that, that Kim included on the... Um, in the packet, the um, the uh, art and culture framework and, and supporting documents. There, the last page of the of the packet has uh, a few project updates. And um, as uh, you know, there was uh, the the bench and box art celebration held uh, last Saturday um, afternoon downtown uh, to celebrate the the student. Um, uh, art benches, and um, they're they're very unique and interesting and fun, and um, so that's uh, that's downtown. Now we have a picture of a few of them there, as well as the riverfront lofts dumpster art. And uh, I did walk over there. Nat and I walked over after the drum line was finished, and and saw the uh, the recycle one is done and out. Um, but I don't think the other one has has been finished yet. And then the water tower art um, project, the art uh, for the water tower on I-94 was approved by the council on last week on the 12th. And um, this will uh, come, into, um, come into vision for all of us at some point in the coming year. Any other things that uh, members would like to add as far as uh, what's happening in your artistic lives or uh, that you'd like us to be made aware of here on the record? Um, I can let you all know that Theater B is doing a project um <laughs> we're producing a show it's actually a u.s premiere of a show called the majority by rob drummond um it was a, a commission he had from the national theater in london and he performed it in london and in scotland and then um and then the pandemic hit and uh when we were thinking about how to adjust our work um, to allow for audiences to be safely distant. Um, the piece came to our attention and we decided to jump at it because it's a one person show. <laughs> um, and it's a little like late night TV meets choose your own adventure um, because the audience gets to actually influence the action of the show by voting. Um, the actor poses real moral questions, and then you as an audience decide, this community agrees, disagrees with the proposition, and the show proceeds from there. Um, and so uh, that show is going to open on um, next Friday, <laughs> not next Friday, uh, the 30th. So we're two weeks out from opening that show. It's going to run for three weeks because um, there's this little election thing happening. So we felt like that was pretty um, timely to go ahead and 
to a show that asks some tough questions about how we practice our democracy. <laughs> and um, it's also very funny. Um, so, but it's particularly important that people participate. So that show will be offered both online and in person. Um, we can seat a very tiny in-house audience and um, we are planning to do that unless um, unless case counts get really too dangerous and we just have to say, no, you only can watch at home. Um, but so far, tickets are uh, to go on sale next Monday. So we have until then to really determine whether or not we'll open the house for any seating or if we'll simply have people with a secure link at home. Um, one of the pieces of, uh, about this project, well, a couple of things that make me super like nerdy psyched out about it is um, the, the man who's directing it in our ensemble, his day job is that he's a video producer. So, um, so it's filmed like it's, you know, a show. Um, and some people can sit in the studio audience and some people will watch from home, much like, you know, watching a David Letterman show or something. Um, and then the other thing that has me super uh, psyched about it is another gentleman in our ensemble. His day job is that he's a software developer. And so he has made a voting app and you just go to your phone and you put in your code and then you get to vote in real time, whether you're watching in the theater or you're watching at home. So it's kind of fun that people watching at home could, for example, decide that the people in the theater don't get to have an intermission. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> the tyranny of the majority. <laughs> um, that's so that's really fun there's a lot of uh aspects to the project that are just coming together really beautifully and mean that every show will be unique um audiences can watch it from wherever they like um and they can still participate and that's pretty cool so we're excited to be running that october 30th through the um november 14th <laughs> i like that plug a few things going on. Um, first off, uh, MSUM, we're very fortunate that we're still able to have live audiences, but we do have some new protocols in place. We have our wind ensemble concerts, band concert, uh, jazz band, uh, percussion ensemble and drumline concert coming up the first week of November. A lot of things back to back that week, but the new protocols are gonna be, if anyone wants to come, um, you have to go online, you have to get a ticket in advance. Can't, there's no box office. We're not gonna let people crowd into a lobby. And uh, the other thing is, once you uh, get a ticket, you will get an email that day that's going to require you the day of the event to go online and certify you're healthy and and um, virus free as best as you know. Uh, so you have to self-regulate uh, before you're allowed to step foot into the theaters, just like all the students do right now when they come on campus every day. So um, that's just to let you know there is right November 16th through 20th coming up. And a um, whole bunch of one act, one uh, re you, uh, interesting readings there from some of the shows are aimed at uh, from elementary school, middle school to adult, uh, one different show a night, basically. It's going to be very interesting readings there. And finally, uh, just to announce something we're bringing back this year because of COVID. Uh, we're bringing back Unsilent Night this year, <laughs> which has, has, has been a while, but we're going to do it in downtown Fargo this year only. We're going to meet in the um, Island Park gazebo and then parade socially distanced up to uh, downtown Fargo. And that is the first weekend of December outdoors. It's cold, but it's always fun. Um, and uh, we're gonna figure, that's gonna be Saturday, December the 5th at uh, 7 p.m. in downtown Island Park. Again, outdoors, all you need to do with that is bring your cell phone and ideally a Bluetooth speaker with you. And we provide a link to the app and you're able to go. It's a 45 minute avant-garde music adventure, a lot of fun. But I'll leave it over. I'm sure Nat has some things to announce too for Concordia. A lot of live music and a lot, a lot of streaming music and the things going on on their campus. Yeah, thanks, Kenyon. I had, I had never heard of Unsilent Night. That sounds awesome. Um, so what we're doing this fall is all of our performances are audience uh, remote. So and, and uh, for the most part, they're they're delayed. So we're, we recorded two weekends ago, and, and they will start to be released through our website here in the coming weeks. But, um, you know, one thing that might be worth mentioning is the Concordia Christmas concert this year will be an entirely virtual experience. 
It's also going to be a gift to the community funded by the college and some donors. It will be available basically all of Christmas week. So it'll, it'll, it'll open, so to speak on, I think the 18th and close um, the 27th, something like that. And so there should be plenty of press about it for those that are interested. And what, one cool thing about it, it will all be pre-recorded with the ensembles individually and separate uh, or distanced with masks and so forth. But um, Michael Culleton's also working with Paul Johnson, who's been the designer of the Christmas Conduit visuals for some years to to create visuals that can be used for the virtual concert experience this year. And so I think it's going to be a, a very different, but also a really exciting uh, experience this time around. All right. Sounds good. So, so uh, there's plenty of opportunities coming up in the coming weeks to experience art in a variety of ways. So um, take advantage of those and support your fellow artists in the community. Is there anything else that anyone would like to add here today before we adjourn? Well, again, I thank you for your time and energy and commitment to this commission. And uh, there being no further business here today, we'll adjourn this meeting at 528. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.